Happy Dragon Age the Veil Guard release day, everybody. <laughs> I don't know about you, uh, but I'm excited for the Fallout as a lot of gamers are going to find out just how bad this game is for the first time now. Uh, and Grums is talking about this already because this had enough pre-orders already before all the controversies came out and all that to where I don't think it's going to be an abject failure. It's not going to look like a Conquered or a Dustborn. But I do believe it's going to underperform, especially as news gets out over time about what this game's doing. As Grum says right here, in AAA, underperform is a terrible place to be with your shareholders. Dragon Age doesn't need to fail to see change, it just has to underperform. And as you can see, he says, I'm starting to think it will be worse than that. I think the game will uh, divide the Dragon Age community, many of whom will never return. And they're already bracing for that. As, as IGN posted uh, to X the other day, this might be the last game in the Dragon Age series. I mean, it took 10 years to come out with this one, after all. It's a big undertaking, and if it's not going to perform well, uh, they might just abandon it just because of the costs associated with it. And that's what we might see happening here. But it gets way worse uh, as it's revealed just how bad this gameplay really is. It's more woke than we even thought. I can't even believe it at this point. Uh, but it gets worse every single time we talk about this, and that's what we'll get into in the news today. Hit that like and subscribe button, everybody. Please join us here as we talk about all things pop culture, especially that with science fiction and fantasy themes. And I loved the Dragon Age setting as a fantasy setting, as a as a fantasy author before, and this is my fantasy series. It's called The Adventures of Baron Von Monocle. It's a six-book series. It's like swashbuckling airship adventure uh, where a bunch of uh, crazy stuff happens, monsters they have to fight, a big war develops over the course of this series, and, and uh, really escalates in, in book three so grab this whole series it's a like i said six books it's all on ebook print and audio uh, to make it convenient for you and i would love for you to get in on my books here thank you guys for making this actually our best month on amazon ever uh, all because of viewers like you uh, and gamers are readers too i mean you guys actually are here and if uh if you know you get catered to i think you guys uh, are, are a pretty fair audience and uh, it's sad that these people want to replace you with these modern audiences that don't actually uh, support any sort of games like they've got right here so we'll get into this right now thank you guys so much it's in the description below and uh let's talk about what's happening with dragon age before uh, we see the push about what's uh, what to expect sales-wise with this. So, new Dragon Age The Veil Guard clip shows Isabella do push-ups as punishment for misgendering Canari uh, character Tosh. Now, this is uh, from John F. Trent, who is working for my Fandom Pulse now, guys, uh, which is my sub stack that's in the description below as well. And so we're writing articles about this as uh, the news breaks in video games, uh, too. A new clip from Dragon Age The Veil Guard shows the character Isabella doing push-ups as punishment for misgendering the Canari character Tosh. Absolutely crazy. This clip was shared on X by Mark Kern yesterday, and uh, you can see it right here. In the clip, uh, Isabella is telling a story about Tosh saying the pounding only uh, uh, that a snake's nose. She's still holding the ruby in her other hand. Maker's panties. I was so proud. Uh, one of the other companions, Ballara, uncomfortably says, oh, um. Then Isabella reacts, ah, shit. They... They're still holding it. Sorry. Uh, instead of uh, instead of saying uh, she's still holding the ruby, it was supposed to be they're still holding the ruby. <laughs> oh wow! So such good fantasy dialogue, my friends. From there, Isabella gets up and begins doing push-ups, explaining that she is pulling a barb. She says tradition in the Lords of Fortune from one of our old members, Barb. Good guy. But not is Barb misgendered? Oh, geez. But like most of us, his plans went sideways a lot. Bad blood among your crews, not good for morale. So there's always a time for being drawn out apologies. So when one of us screws up, uh, we know we've screwed up, but we do a quick 10 to put it right. Pulling a Barb. Oh my gosh. This is such modernistic garbage that again, does not fit the fantasy realm. It feels like it feels like some like high school kids gym class or something like that in modern times. And that's the problem with, like with hiring writers who don't know how to write. <laughs> honestly, uh, it, you know when you have these anachronisms in here, it kills the emergence even beyond just the they them BS that that makes this just uh, insufferable to begin with. Like that whole like push up situation. Again, just feels like something modern that would be happening, not something that would be happening in a medieval fantasy setting. 
And so uh, that's a problem. And that's what an editor's for to say, hey, this is the type of thing you shouldn't put in there. But when they come to virtue signaling and they want to talk about the gender identities and and apologizing for misgendering, uh, they they have to go so far because that by itself is such a modernism, it's ridiculous, uh, that they don't care anymore. And, And with that lack of caring comes lack of care for the immersion in the world, which destroys the storytelling of the game. And that's exactly what we've got here. So after the player character chooses a dialogue option described as that's very open-minded, Isabella reveals that Tosh is not the first so-called non-binary member of the Lord of Fortune. There's there's dozens of them, of course. <laughs> Tosh isn't the first non-binary member of the Lords. Really, Isabella adds, it was a little before your time, but Horlicks was one of ours. Bastard looked better than I did in a dress or pants, and out of them too. Ah, uh, what the heck? It's 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 so weird. I, I can you imagine people talking like this? Uh, absurd. When the player chooses another dialogue option labeled "Why not just apologize?" Isabella responds. Sometimes people say "Oops, sorry," and hope that fixes it. But they just want to get the whole thing over with. Trust me, I know. But pulling a barf, you sweat a little. Makes you think a little about it more. Shows the other person you mean it. So again, this is this is like weird SJW lingo to be like apologies are not enough. You bigot right <laughs> it's this is what they're thinking when they're writing this fantasy dialogue ridiculous but what if they mean it when they say they're sorry though <laughs> that's the other reason some people mess up and get all dramatic they make it about them you know i didn't mean it right i'd never do that on purpose they feel so bad about it it's on everyone else to smooth it over and make them feel better pulling a barf puts a person on the person who screws up they made the mess they fix it done unbelievable uh with this here like you have to do penance now and that just goes to show that this woke sort of thing is a religion it's not anything else but that because let's let's look at this i mean there's no uh verifiable way that a man dressing as a woman could be a woman there's no such thing as a non-binary for real it doesn't actually exist in reality and so uh when they do this they're just making up words and you're supposed to take it on faith that these people are are whatever they are, and you're supposed to worship the ground they walk on, and we're and their pronouns are like some sort of like humiliation ritual to gaslight you. And so, since you're in that, you have to do penance if you do things uh, wrong. It's so weird. Uh, this is this is so creepy, and this is the world that we're uh, you know trying to be forced to live in with these stupid video game companies at this juncture. So this clip comes in the wake of a man who claims to be a woman calling himself Laura Kate Dale, announcing he worked on Dragon Age: The Veil vale Guard. How exciting! I just got approval to say this. I worked on Dragon Age The Veil Guard. I've been sat on the secret for nearly four years, and I'm so excited to finally tell everybody I'm in the credits. Thank you so much to uh, some Blue Sky account uh, for reaching out to get me involved. And as you can see, uh, this is uh, probably where a lot of this stuff comes from. Uh, This person uh, also advocates for chemically maiming children by giving them puberty blockers. Here it is. Puberty blockers for trans teens were initially a compromise for cis comfort. Okay, we'll put up puberty on hold until they're 18 before starting hormones so that they're an adult before hormone therapy makes body changes. But now even putting unwanted puberty on hold isn't an option, as it shouldn't be. It's child abuse, my friends. As you can see, the weird stuff that these people are trying to put out and trying to force basically on teenage boys like to accept this because that's who the target demographic of this is all the way around. But I don't think it's going to do that great. And so uh, Grums is talking about like, uh, you know, what will happen here possibly. And it, it probably like I agree with him that it probably will not fail all the way. Uh, but it will actually uh, underperform. And and so here's the votes on uh, a poll that he put up this morning. And you can see, like, do great. There's not going to be that many people voting for that. I don't think it's going to do great by any means. The title is too big to fail and likely will just underperform. But could we we could all be surprised today. What do you think? And, uh, yeah, somebody put uh, DA will close Bioware. I don't know about that, my friends. Uh, I think uh, that's that's uh, that's a little uh, hopium right there. But if you look at the Steam charts, um, uh sales whoops once i pull this up because i'm uh, i'm totally ready for this i'm gonna fix this and edit guys don't worry um <laughs> and uh we'll see how dragon age is doing this morning as of its release uh once we load here um it is number one on steam and it jumped up it was at number three yesterday uh and so uh people are checking this out now that this game is out and that does bode well for the game 
Now, it still very much can underperform at this level. It could drop off the charts very quickly, and we'll be watching this uh, as it goes along just to see how things go and to see what happens with this franchise uh, because this is a train wreck. It's disgusting, and nobody wants to play this kind of game like this for real. Once people get into this, I think there's going to be a lot of regret. Now, there are a lot of platforms, by the way, that do allow refunds, so if you did pre-order this game, make sure uh, you can do that because you should. I mean, obviously, we should send a message to BioWare. Very important to do for gamers. And uh, yes, leave a comment down below with what you think. Do you think this game's going to fail? Do you think it's going to just underperform? Or do you think it's going to do fine? Do you think it's going to do great? Just because everybody's so hype about the Dragon Age brand? Uh, hit the like and subscribe button. And of course, grab my fantasy series, The Adventures of Baron Von Monocle. Start here with First Demon Country. Thank you guys so much for supporting the books.